Want to discover the secret tools that top developers are using? You're in the right place. Today, we're going to be going over the absolute best Google Chrome extensions for web developers. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy, and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. All right, let's jump right in. Up first on our list is ColorZilla. This extension is really just a fancy color picker. One of the things I do right after installing this plugin is come right up here and pin the extension. Now we will always have quick access to the extension. So to use this extension, just come up here and click on the ColorZilla icon. And first we'll take a look at pick color from page. When we click on that, we see that we have the crosshairs and we get a red border around elements of the page as we hover over them. We can also see that there's a toolbar at the top of the page that gives us color information as we're hovering over various elements. We can also change from a point sample to a three by three pixel average or even as big as a 25 by 25 pixel average. And we can see that we have a box here and we get the average of the colors we're hovering over. To select a color, just hover over the color you want to select and click the mouse. Now we can see that the color code was copied to the clipboard. By default, the hexadecimal color is copied to the clipboard. If you want something else, you can choose copy special from the menu and select any of these options here. Also, you'll notice that the chosen color is shown in the little box by the plugin icon. Now let's take a look at the color picker. This is just your normal color picker that you see pretty much anywhere else. And if you select a color and click OK, you can choose copy special and copy the hexadecimal RGB or HSL values for that color. Up next, we're gonna check out the pick color history. And you can see that it just brings up the color picker and you can choose the color history right here. Another really cool feature of this plugin is the web page color analyzer. If we choose that, it analyzes the web page and gives us the colors from that web page. If we click on one of the colors, we can see that we get a red box around the elements that have that color. There's also a palette browser, which has several different options here, including web safe colors, named colors, and several other options. The last thing that we'll check out is the CSS gradient generator. If we choose that option, it really just takes you to the ColorZilla webpage and you can define your gradient. You can also specify things like orientation and size. When you're happy with your gradient, you can see that the CSS for that gradient is generated automatically for you. You can also switch to SAS and get the SAS code for that. The second plugin on the list is called What Font. This plugin is great for helping you to determine what font is being used. So to use this plugin, just come up and click on the what font icon. And then you can see that as you are hovering over text, you get a popover that tells you what font is being used. If you click, then you get more information about that font, such as the font style, weight, size, line height, and color. To exit the plugin, just click on the exit what font or click on the icon again. What font will also give you the backup fonts if they are specified. Another thing to note is you can open multiple pop-ups on a page. Number three on the list is CSS Viewer. This plugin is great for seeing exactly what CSS is being applied to elements on the web page. To use the plugin, just come up and click on the CSS Viewer icon and click Start. Now you can see as we hover over elements of the web page, we get a red box around each element and the CSS that's applied to those elements. There are also some keyboard commands that you can use. So for example, if you want to freeze this popover on this element here, you can tap the letter F and now that popover stays and you can inspect it more closely. If you want to copy these styles, press the letter C and then copy it manually with Control C or Command C. I will admit this flow could be a little better, such as when you press the letter C, it just copies the styles to the clipboard, but this does work. If you want to exit the extension, just press the escape key. Number four on the list is Clear Session. This plugin is great for when you're working on a web page and want to clear your cookies or storage, but you don't want to sign out of everything in Google Chrome. To use the plugin, just come up and click the red Clear Session button, and you can see that you get a green checkbox. This plugin clears the cookies, local storage, and session storage but only for the website that you are currently on. This allows you to debug issues without signing out of everything. I use this all the time. Number five on the list is Web Developer by Chris Pedrick. This extension has a ton of different things. It's really just way too much to go over in this video. 
and there's going to be some crossover between some of the things that this extension does and other extensions on this list. So to use this plugin, just come up, click on the icon, and you can see that there are tabs across the top. We can do things with the cookies, CSS, forms, images. So for example, we can outline all images and we can see we get a red border around the image. We can hide images. And to turn these options off, we just come back and click them again. We can do things like resize the browser, validate the CSS, validate HTML, just all kinds of things that this plugin does. I really can't recommend it enough. You should definitely download this one and check it out yourself. If you're interested in me doing a full video on this plugin, leave me a comment down below. Number six on the list is an extension called Check My Links. This extension goes through all the links on your web page and checks to make sure they are valid links. To use the extension, just come up and click on the icon and it will scan your web page and go through and validate all the links. You can also see that it gives you a green box on all of the links on the page. This is saying that these are valid, but if you have any warnings or invalid links, the boxes would be that color as well. Also, another thing to note, if you have any invalid or warning links, then the complete information for that will be in the developer console. We can see here that all the links are valid and there's no information in the DevTools console. Number seven on the list is User Agent Switcher for Chrome. This extension allows you to quickly spoof the Chrome browser user agent. The extension really only changes the user agent string that is passed with each web request. We can see here if I come to whatismybrowser.com that I'm using Chrome 115 on a Mac. But if I come up and click on the extension icon, I can change my user agent string to any of these options. So let's go with Firefox on a Mac. Now we can see that the browser is announcing that it's Firefox 33 on a Mac. But we can also see that whatismybrowser.com also still knows that this is Chrome 115 on a Mac. So it's really only changing the user agent string that's being passed. This is good for quick testing though. Number eight on our list is fake filler. This extension looks at fields on the web page and automatically fills them in with dummy data. So for example, here on the create a Google account page to use this plugin, I can just come up and click on the fake filler icon and we can see that it generates a random name to fill in here. I can continue clicking on the icon and it just generates random names. If I right click on the icon, I can click on options and we can see here that we can change all kinds of things about the way this plugin works. So for example, we can change the password it uses to something specific or have it just generate a random password. We can set the fields that it ignores. We can specify the fields that it should agree to the terms. We can also come over here and set custom fields that it should fill out. So if you're testing a signup form that has a specific field that's not common, you could set that here and quickly be able to fill that information out when you're testing it. This plugin is great for testing forms of all kinds without having to fill out all the fields by hand. Up next on our list at number nine is mod header. Mod header allows you to specify request and response headers to be sent or received with every request. So to use this plugin, just come up and click on the mod header icon. And here we can set request headers. So for example, if I wanted to pass the authorization header with a value of test, I can type that in there and then come back and go to google.com and open up the dev tools. And if I come to the dev tools, I can see that in the request headers, we are passing test as an authorization header. You can choose to pause mod header so that the functionality is not working. And then you can just resume it back. If you click the plus icon, you can choose several other things. You can change the cookies, content security policy, set your redirect URLs. You can also set filters. There's actually a lot of things you can do with this plugin. It's very helpful. I've used this plugin quite a bit up until I discovered the next plugin on this list. And that brings me to number 10, Requestly. This plugin is super powerful and has a ton of features. It really should have a video of its own. To use Requestly, just come up, click on the icon. And in this case, I'm just gonna choose Open App, which brings us to a full screen mode. Here we can see that we have HTTP rules, sessions, mock server, and API client on the left side. Under HTTP rules, we have my rules, and we can create our first rule. As you can see, there's a lot of things you can do here. This plugin can do everything that mod header can do, as well as the user agent switcher plugin that we went over before. We can do things like redirect a request, cancel a request, replace strings, modify the headers, add and remove query parameters, and insert scripts. We can modify the response. We can even do things like 
delay network requests. So for example, if we choose this and click create rule, we'll name this delay and we will delay Google and we can delay this up to 5,000 milliseconds. So let's do the max and click create rule. Now, if I come over and go to google.com, we can see that it's spinning because of the delay and then google.com loads. Well, sorta. Now there's a delay on loading the image because it contains the string Google. Pretty cool stuff. We can choose to disable this rule or we can just come back to my rules and delete this. If we choose modify API response, we can see that we can do a request API or a GraphQL API. We can even set things like serve this response body without making a call to the server. So this is really good for testing web pages and just mocking the response that you want to return. I'm just going to blow through some of the other things real quick here. So if we come to sessions, we can actually enter a URL and click start recording and it will record the mouse movement and screen for that session. And then you can play it back, but you can see the network requests and JavaScript console. There's also a mock server. I actually haven't used this, but one thing to note is you do have to be signed in to use the API mocks. I definitely am looking forward to checking this out in the future. And then there's also an API client, which is in beta, but it kind of works just like Postman or Thunder client in VS Code. One last thing to show you is under HTTP rules, there are templates and you can use these as starting blocks. So for example, if I wanted to block Facebook, I could click on this and we can see that it generates a rule that if request contains facebook.com and we could create that rule. If you'd like to see more of this plugin, leave me a comment down below and I'll make a video covering just this plugin. Changing gears a little bit here, plugin number 11 is an accessibility tool called Wave Evaluation Tool. To use this plugin, just navigate to the web page that you want to analyze and click on the plugin icon. Now we can see that it scans the page and checks for accessibility issues. It contains a ton of information and annotates the web page with its findings. We can choose view details and see a full report of the analysis. We can see that we have some features that it found to be good. Also any errors. I really like how it kind of shows you exactly in the code what it found. And if we click on these, we can choose code and it will show you in the HTML exactly what it found, what was good and what wasn't. This plugin works entirely in the browser. So it will work on internet and local development sites. And the last plugin on the list is called Wapalizer or at least something like that. I'm not really sure. This plugin is maybe a little less helpful and more catering towards my curiosity. I really enjoy using it though. So the way this works is we can come to a web page and click on the icon and it tells us exactly what technologies are used for that web page. We can see things like on this website, we're using Google Analytics, Vue.js, Vimeo Video Player, the Google Tag Manager, all kinds of things. I think it's really cool to go to websites and just run this tool and see exactly what they're using. Let me know if you think this is useful in the comments. If you have a Google Chrome extension that you feel like should have made this list, be sure to leave me a comment down below. I would love to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this other video where I talk about something really cool. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.